You know, the first thing that people have to do is realize the finiteness of the Earth, that we're a closed system. You look at it from space, and we, we all talk about the thin blue line, but you realize the hostility of most of the universe. And also, you know, we're up there in a very closed ecosystem, so you start to realize the finiteness of an ecological system. The Earth has great potential to heal itself, but it's limited. When you think about the, you know, this picture that was taken back when um, I think it was Apollo, was it eight, Apollo eight? eight? You know, this Earthrise picture, which fueled the Environmental Protection Agency, and that's the same time when we started realizing that the ozone layer is being affected by these hydrofluorocarbons. Now the hole is closed down because we banned those things. And so the finiteness of the planet that Jeff talked about is real. Mm -hmm. But if we work together, we can help you know, rectify some of the things that we've caused as human beings. You just have to uh, marvel at the incredible buffering capacity of our planet and what it's been through for thousands and thousands of years and you know the planet will survive there's no doubt about that it's us little humans but there will be some kind of life on this planet and um, so it's a little egocentric because we just think in our terms not in terms of life in general or the health of the one strange rock for now at least the earth is the one place that we have so we better take care of it Apollo 13 was unique, I think, in, in how hard Ron Howard worked to make it as realistic as possible, and, and he did a great job. So I thought Apollo 13 was great. I, th I talked to Jim Lovell about it. I said, it was great, Jim, it was fantastic. And he said, well, the only thing I didn't like, he goes, yeah, it was accurate, everything else. He said, but the only thing I didn't like, I never swear. Houston, we have a problem. Well, it was when the, you know, the, the <laughs> spacecraft blew up and blew the side off the spacecraft, they had me say, oh, and it wasn't even the worst swear word. And I said, well, Jim, trust me, I never swear. He said, <laughs> I said, okay, other than that, Jim, it was pretty solid, right? Everything floats and everything floats. It can be fun and it can be frustrating, yeah, right? Especially yeah. when you're, yeah, yeah. Star Trek. It broke so many barriers. Yeah, that's true. You know, you had the first African-American woman on television that wasn't a maid or a servant, a Lieutenant Uhura. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the first interracial kiss, the first intergalactic kiss. I'm kind of, you know, I, I can't even give one on that one, so I'll give a toss up. I was never a Trekkie on TV, but I've, I've, I've come to love it through the movies, and I also love the Star Wars, so. The thing that I wanted more than anything else, because the food up there, it's dehydrated, it's mushy. I wanted a nice, crunchy salad. I wanted a really good, greasy piece of pizza. I had cravings for anything with calcium, and I would have killed for a glass of milk. The problem is you're not pounding those bones and I'm getting a loss, so it wouldn't have done me any good. But I would have killed for, you know, a vanilla ice cream cone or a glass of milk. <laughs>